Boyd is Blob was if if I look back on my career, but Boyd is Blob was possibly the most creative idea that we ever came up with for a game. I mean, to be original, there are so many games in the game industry that are clones. And unfortunately, like any creative industry, one genre does well, suddenly next year there's a hundred of them. Well, to a person, people who saw Boy and His Blob pretty much said, I've never seen anything like it. And it was weird and wacky, but it was an amazing game mechanic. And I would love to tell you how I came up with it, and I did. David Crane, who has been my partner since uh, early 80s, we've worked together on video games. David Crane was working with me at our company, Absolute Entertainment, at the time, and we were looking for an NES concept to do. And Dave called me. He worked on the West Coast. I worked on the East Coast. He called me and said, I'm going to send you a file, an NES file. Uh, run it, and we'll talk about it. And I think at that point in time, we didn't have the Internet, so he FedExed me a cartridge, and I plugged it in. And all it was was a black screen, and there was a kid standing there, and he pushed a button, and he tossed a jelly bean, flew through the air to this marshmallow guy next to him who caught it in his mouth, and then he went, and he turned into a ladder. And I just looked at it and said, holy cow, that's brilliant. So I called Dave, and I said, tell me more. And he said, so the boy is going to have this bag full of jelly beans of all different flavors, and depending on the flavor, when you throw it to the blob, the blob turns into a different tool. And it's a tool game where you're trying to go through an adventure, and you need a set of tools, and the set of tools are the blob eating the jelly beans. And I said, that is freaking brilliant. So Dave flew out to the East Coast uh, because we wanted to get the game done for Christmas and we were on a tight timeline and he took an apartment down the road from our East Coast office because we had all, a lot of talent on the East Coast we had game designers and we had programmers and sound people and we needed a team to get it done for Christmas and we brought Dave out and he rented a room about half a mile from the office and we dropped everything and he and I collaborated where I wrote code and he wrote code. We brought a team of other, we had another programmer on it, we had artists, and we did a blitz to get that game done because it was such a brilliant idea and we really felt that it would do good in the market. And um, it was a crazy, crazy schedule. We, there was a date, this was the first game we were going to publish on the NES. We had done development of games, but then you hand it off to the publisher and he deals with Nintendo. So we didn't have no idea how that process went. Well, we called Nintendo and they said, okay, for a game to make Christmas, it has to be done by May 30th. So you have to deliver to us the final tested ROM image by May 30th, and then we manufacture it in Japan and we ship it to you sometime in the fall and you put it in the stores. Great. This was April 15th when he sent me that round. And I said, there's no way it's going to make Christmas. I said, so let's talk about next year. <gasps> well, when he came out, and we started looking at it, and talking about it, talk, we said, well, let's just get it done as fast as we can. Maybe it'll make Christmas. Impossible. You can't do it in six weeks. So we brought everybody into a room and sat programmers down and artists, and we told them the concept. Everybody loved it. And we said... And we're going to try to have it done for May 30th. People looked at their watches, and everybody left. And the one guy that we were really drafting to do a lot of the heavy lifting technology-wise was this brilliant, brilliant programmer. The guy was, so he's an alien, he was so smart. He came up to me and he said, can I ask you a question? And he hadn't been working at the company that long. And I said, yeah. And he said, is it normal to do a game of that complexity in six weeks? And I said, no, not really. So he ended up working around the clock, and I ended up working around the clock, and Dave ended up working around the clock, and we worked our butts off on that game. And it, the concept really went from where it was, it, it, it became everything we wanted it to be. The idea of the jelly bean flavor controlling the object, 
We did a trampoline that you could jump on, which allowed you to get up to high places. We did an umbrella that you could use to fall from a high place and not die because it slowed you down. Uh, we did a rocket ship that allowed you to fly from the planet you were on, which was Earth, to Blobolonia. That's how you got to the second half of the game. Dave wrote the code for the first half of the game. I wrote the code for the second half of the game, the Blobolonia half. And um, we collaborated. So half the code was his, half the code was mine. And we could do it because we could read each other's code. We've known each other for so long. Very hard to collaborate like that on a game, but, but we, we were able to do it. Uh, animations and art was done by a brilliant artist named Jesse Capilli. Did a great job on it. Uh, music was really good. If you listen to the theme song, I have to say it's slightly inspired by the Indiana Jones theme song. Not a rip-off, but inspired by it. It was great. Um, game was amazing. So now we had to go back to New Jersey and get it to Nintendo in two days. It still wasn't done. There were still bugs. So what we did is we took an engineer and we said, what are you doing tomorrow? Tomorrow's the deadline. He said, why? He said, we're sending you to Seattle. So we flew a guy to Seattle, and he took up residence in a hotel directly across the street from Nintendo's office, set up a whole development environment, set up a ROM burner, had cartridges, and sat and wait because we were no longer able to FedEx. We couldn't afford the day. So we worked late into the night and we used the early internet. This is the early 90s. And we sent the entire ROM image of the game in the middle of the night, about six hours, over the internet. He received it. It was actually the middle of the next day of the deadline. He received it at 4 in the afternoon, assembled it, burned the ROMs, closed the cartridges up, walked into Nintendo at 5 minutes to 5 on the last day, and said, here's our submission of a boy and his blob. And the game went out for Christmas. And that was insane. <laughs> was uh, that sent over America Online? <laughs> <laughs> it was, Amer it was <laughs> America Online. It was. It was the only way to do it. <laughs> It was America Online. It was Amer I'm glad you reminded me. Hilarious. It was Online. You've got. Did mail. you join via one of those 50 free hour discs? We, we did. <laughs> and America Online was actually by then had gotten pretty good at big files because it would take six hours to send a file that big, and after three hours, if it crashed, America Online was able to pick it up where it left off. Do you remember your body? Thank God. Do you remember your body? Yeah, I think we. Were, I, 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 think, <laughs> I think we were probably running at like. 8, 8K baud rate. <laughs> yeah, you can see every bike go. About a month later, we got a call from Nintendo, and they said, we want you to know, we really love this game. It's a favorite game in Nintendo. Everybody's playing it. We love it. But we're going to have our creative people call because they have a couple of changes they want to make. We're okay with that. So we got a call from their game guy, a guy named Howard Phillips, who was their famous game guy. He was in the... He was actually a... Cartoon, uh, comic strip in Nintendo magazine that featured Howard wearing a bow tie. And he actually wore a bow tie. Howard's a great guy. Uh, Howard said, one thing we don't like about the game is it's possible in your adventure, it's deep caverns and caves, and there's a lot of horizontal and vertical traveling around, you can lose the blob. Like, you could lose him. Like, he goes down a cave and you use the trampoline and go up and you don't know where he is, and he doesn't come to you because he can't find his way to you. And they said, that's bad. You're kind of stuck at that point. You have no blob. You can't do anything. So you need to fix that. So Dave and I, the code game was done. Code was done. What the hell are we going to do with this? So we thought about it for a long time, and there was this one jelly bean that we had in the game, and there was no use for the tool. Um... It was the grape jelly bean. The grape jelly bean, if you tossed it and you ate it, and he ate it, it turned into a little wall. And all of the jelly bean flavors and tools had a pun associated with them. Every time Dave put one in, it was a pun. So the grape made a wall because it was the grape wall of China. So, but the wall had no purpose. So he said, well, maybe we could do something with that jelly bean, because we don't really need the wall jelly bean in there. So he, made it, he changed the wall jelly bean into one that if you threw it on the ground, when it landed on the ground, 
the blob appeared. So wherever the blob was in the world, if you took this jelly bean and landed it on the ground, the blob would appear. And the blob also wouldn't eat it. If the blob was standing there and you tossed this jelly bean to him, the blob frowned and would not eat it. Because you didn't want him eating it. Because it had to land on the ground and it brought him there. Well, so what the heck are we going to call it? You can't call it the grape jelly bean. So Dave thought about it and he said, it's the ketchup jelly bean. Because it allows the blob to catch it. So there is a rumor that you can do something. I don't know how, but there's something you can do that trick the blob into eating the ketchup jelly bean, even though it's programmed not to. There's a bug that if you can get him to eat the ketchup jelly bean, he will turn into a wall, which means nothing and does nothing, but it's a cool little so thing. So that was our answer to how we got the, the blob back.